Okay, so you want to find a job that doesn't need like a 10 page resume, right? right? And to make it even better, you'd love to work somewhere across the globe. Sounds about right. It's super common to feel stuck in that catch-22, you need experience for a job, but a job to get experience. Totally. It's like, how do you even break free from that cycle, especially if you're dreaming of an international adventure? Well, the good news is these articles and job postings show it's totally doable. There are definitely ways to break out of that catch-22, especially if you're up for working abroad. Okay. Now you're speaking my language. Yeah. So where do we even begin? What kind of jobs are we actually talking about here? One pathway that kept coming up was teaching English as a second language, or ESL. ESL, got it. And apparently the demand is huge, especially in countries like China, South Korea, and Japan. Okay, so there are definitely jobs out there, but what about the experience thing? Do you need to be like a certified teacher to even think about applying? That's the interesting part. You often don't need years of actual classroom experience. Lots of employers are more interested in native level fluency and a passion for teaching. So it's more about your enthusiasm and ability to connect with people. Exactly. One article even mentioned a woman who landed an awesome ESL job in Vietnam, and her background was leading wilderness retreats, not teaching. Wow, really? Yeah. Her experience with leadership and connecting with people matter more than a traditional teaching background. Of course, a TFL certification that's teaching English as a foreign language can boost your chances. And you can get that online or through short-term programs abroad, too. That's amazing. I love that. It's all about those transferable skills, right? Yeah. Like, it's not always about what you've done, but what you can do no matter where you are in the world. You got it. And a bunch of these articles were all about how much employers value skills like communication, problem solving, being adaptable, all that, especially in a global workplace. Those are skills you pick up from all kinds of experience. Exactly. Even if they're not directly related to the job you're applying for. Okay. So ESL teaching. That's a good one. What other interesting jobs jumped out at you from all these articles? Working on a cruise ship might not be for everyone, but... Oh, tell me more. It's a chance to travel to all these different countries while getting experience in this fast-paced, super international environment. And, you know, speaking of transferable skills, one article talked about how even experience in, say, hospitality, like just working as a barista, could be a huge plus on a cruise ship. Makes sense. Because they need people who can handle things moving fast, provide really great customer service, work well when things get stressful. Those are all skills that apply to a lot of different jobs. It's like you're not just serving coffee anymore. You're creating this whole experience for someone on Maybe a trip of a lifetime, right? Okay, maybe I got a little carried away there, but you see what I mean. Totally. And it's not only those customer-facing roles either. Think about it. Cruise ships need, like, everything. Electricians and plumbers, chefs, entertainers, you name it. It's like its own little city. Exactly. So if you've got a specific skill set, there might be a really cool opportunity for you to use it overseas on a cruise ship. That's so cool. Now, this next one, I have to admit, really caught my eye. Becoming an au pair, living with a local family really getting to know a new culture from the inside out and getting paid to care for kids. Sounds pretty great, right? It does. Sign me up. <laughs> well, it's a super option for anyone who loves working with kids and wants that up close and personal experience of living abroad. Okay. I'm sold on the idea. But how does it actually work? Do you just like find a family online and hop on a plane? Not quite. These articles really recommended going through an agency, but make sure it's a reputable one. So they can kind of I don't know, vet the families and make sure it's a good fit. Exactly. They vet the host families and they're there to support you during your stay. That makes me feel a lot better, to be honest. Yeah. But how do you even find those good agencies in the first place? Is that something these articles get into? Oh, absolutely. There's this one article, I think it was called Landing Your Dream Au Pair Gig. Yeah. And it specifically talked about using websites like Au Pair World and Great Au Pair. I've heard of those, yeah. You can set up a profile, look through families, even connect directly with potential host families. They also said it's a good idea to check out reviews from other au pairs, you know, get a feel for the agency, the families they work with. Smart. Okay, so we've got options for people who love teaching, people who love a fast-paced environment, those who are great with kids. What about the people who are happiest with their laptop? and a good Wi-Fi connection. Mm -hmm. Is the whole digital nomad thing a real possibility? 100% it is. With remote work becoming so common now, more and more people are finding ways to build careers they can literally do from anywhere. That's the dream. 
Right. And these articles we looked at, they highlighted tons of remote job possibilities, web development, graphic design, virtual assisting, freelance writing even. Okay, that all sounds amazing. Hmm. But how do you actually find these amazing remote jobs? I feel like everyone and their dog wants to work from a beach in Bali these days. Yeah, it's definitely a competitive field, no doubt. But these articles had some solid advice. Like what? Well, for starters, websites like Upwork, Fiverr, Remote.co, those are great places to find freelance gigs. LinkedIn is super helpful for connecting with companies that specifically offer remote positions. Oh, and one article even suggested joining online communities for digital nomads. Makes sense. Strength in numbers, right? Totally. People share job leads, give advice, offer support. It's a whole community. That's so important, especially when you're trying to figure out a new way of working, a new way of living. Love that. But all this talk of remote work and these amazing destinations, it makes me think of the, well, practical side of things. But can you really just pack your bags and work from another country? Or are there visas and all that legal stuff to worry about? That's where the research comes in. Big time. Every country has different roles, and these articles really stressed figuring out those visa requirements before you do anything else. So maybe don't book that one-way ticket just yet. Probably not, no. Some countries are super into it and have specific visas for remote workers and freelancers. Others, you might need a tourist visa, which means you can only stay for a limited time. And it's not just visas, either. You have to think about health insurance, taxes, even something as basic as setting up a local bank account. It can get complicated. Complicated is an understatement sometimes. Right. One article I think was called The Legal Side of Being a Digital Nomad suggested talking to an immigration lawyer or a tax advisor to make sure you've got all your bases covered. It really is. Like any big adventure, a little planning goes a long way, right? <laughs> but wow, we've talked about a lot from teaching English to working on a cruise ship to... I don't know, building your dream office in some amazing country. With, like, a view of the Eiffel Tower. Exactly. It seems like there's really is a path for anyone who's brave enough to, you know, just go for it. That's what's so cool about these articles. They prove that you don't need years and years of experience to have an amazing experience working abroad. Cool. There are so many stories about people who took a chance, figure out how their skills could work in a new place, and they made some incredible opportunities for themselves. I'm still thinking about that woman who got that ESL job mm -hmm. because of her experience with wilderness retreats. Right. It reminds you that sometimes the things that seem totally unrelated to a real job Total. can actually be your biggest advantage. You just have to figure out how to show people that. Exactly. And that's where, like, taking the time to think about yourself, your skills, what you actually want, that's so important. It's kind of like... What are you good at? What do you love? What are you hoping to get out of this whole experience? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you a people person or do you prefer to work on your own? Fast paced or more laid back? When you know the answers to those questions, then you can narrow down your options. Figure out what really fits your personality and your goals. It's like they say, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. But, yeah. okay, so you've done the self-reflection thing. Now what? How do you take that knowledge and actually do something with it? Well, one article had this super practical exercise. Write down your top five dream destinations. Like, don't overthink it. Just the first places that pop into your head. Okay. I like it so far. So you've got your list. Now it's research time. What are the visa rules? How expensive is it to live there? But most importantly, what kind of job opportunities are out there? So much good advice. I love how practical it is. It's not just follow your dreams. It's like, here's how you actually do it. Mm. And, and that actually reminds me of something else that came up a lot in these articles, networking. Oh, yeah. Super important. Talk to people who've already done it. Join those online communities. Even reach out to companies you'd love to work for. Totally. You never know what could happen. Couldn't agree more. Building those connections can be a game changer, both for finding jobs and, you know, just for handling the ups and downs of adjusting to a whole new place, a whole new life. It's like having a built-in support system, yeah. even if it's virtual. Okay, so as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the main takeaway for our listeners? What do you really want them to remember? You don't need to have every single thing figured out to just start. Be curious, do your research, be open to things changing, and most importantly, don't let fear stop you. That's it. I love that. So well said. The world is full of incredible opportunities. And sometimes the most rewarding experiences come from pushing yourself outside your comfort zone and into the unknown. Beautifully said. There you have it. A deep dive into finding jobs that don't need a resume a mile long, especially those jobs that could take you to a new country, new experiences, a whole new chapter in your life. 